What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Steam Runner here, and today we're talking all about keeping that ball rolling. Welcome back to another video today. We're just out here on the trails between a moderate seven mile run between 6.45 and 6.55 per mile. Today we're talking all about keeping the ball rolling. Well, technically we'll be keeping the ball rolling after this run, but I want to talk to you about this new mantra, what it means, why it's going to be important during this training block and uh, yeah, kickstarting this whole marathon journey. So there we have it, seven miles moderate to kickstart this marathon training plan, feeling good, feeling very grateful that I can still run, keep the fitness up there, excited to dive in to this marathon training block. So the purpose of today is purely going to be talking all about this new mantra that we're going to be focusing on, keeping the ball rolling. It's something that Chris has drummed into me and his other coaching clients. It's something that Tom Schwartz, Tin Man Elite Head Coach, uh, tells all of his people. It is a very, very sensible mantra that will dive into a little bit more information as to what it means, because although it sounds obvious on the surface, it might not be when I dive in to the whole training philosophies. Here we go, run completed, seven miles done and dusted, six 49 per mile moderate run out on the trails 151 beats per minute average absolutely beautiful out there this morning and a great way to kick start marathon training it's 18 weeks this week until the 18th of april 2021 when fingers crossed the Newport Marathon will be taking place. And we're diving into this marathon training journey. The marathon training series starts this weekend. But again, just a prerequisite. Before we jump into the series, I gave you an intro video last week, laying out some ground rules, some baselines as to how we're gonna be working. And today, this is all about a mantra that I'm gonna be taking with me through my training block. And I wanna dive into a little bit more about, because on the surface, as I just said, it seems relatively self-explanatory, but there is a deeper meaning to it. And I kind of want to dive into that and explain the process. So I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Tom Schwartz. He's the Tin Man Elite head coach. If you haven't, go search up on YouTube Tin Man Elite. They have an incredible group of elite athletes based over in Colorado in the States. And Tom is the head coach of that group. He's an absolutely incredible coach, someone that I follow, someone that Chris follows. And one of his sayings is keeping the ball rolling. And the reason that's so important, as you guys know, is training is all about being consistent and consistency is key. We all know that in running, if you can be consistent and string some good weeks back to back, and then you're gonna be in darn good shape for whatever race you have coming up as opposed to if you can't manage to string uh, good training weeks back to back due to various reasons. So you wanna keep the ball rolling and obviously that's a very obvious thing to say, but with the type of training that I'm gonna be doing with Chris, which is very Canova based style training, which a few of you picked up on, I'm gonna be doing various uh, training in pace zones. So basically, Every run has a purpose. This is just a bit of a recap from the intro video if you missed it, but it, every run that I'm gonna be doing, whether it's easy, recovery, uh, moderate, uh, marathon pace, critical velocity, threshold work, 
progressive runs, whatever it, whatever might be thrown at me, everything is going to have a reason and everything is going to have a purpose leading up to that end goal. There's not going to be one point where I'm told I can go out there and maybe do some reps and just go absolutely all out because that's not going to help me towards my goal. I'm not going to have a free reign per se in terms of pace and going out and doing some one kilometer reps. If I'm prescribed some one kilometer reps, then I'm going to be doing them at critical velocity pace, which for me in my marathon training block is going to be 530 per mile. Now, obviously, I've done kilometer reps before. This is just an example, but I've done kilometer reps before that have been quicker than 530 per mile. But the idea is to keep the ball rolling. So at no point Am I going to be a session warrior, which I have in the past. I've been very guilty of being a real session warrior, going out hard in these sessions, absolutely burning myself out so that the next few runs are rather tiresome. It's all about hitting the targets, hitting the goals, and then continuing on to the next run. So following on from that, as we're going to be training at pace rather than any other data, not a stride, foot, pot, nod, heart rate, we're going to be training at pace. And here's a good analogy for you if you do love your heart rate stuff. If you're training at pace, you're telling your body what to do. And if you're training at heart rate, you're listening to your body. That's an analogy that Chris told me. I think it's a brilliant one. It is really, really poignant. And so for me, I'm going to be telling my body what to do. And what Chris will hopefully see as we go through the training block is he'll see the heart rate for all those efforts that I put out there come down uh, as we go forward. We know then we're heading in the right direction and we can adjust and adapt and do whatever we need to as we progress through. But hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. We're keeping the ball rolling. We're working at specific zones. We're not going out and absolutely slogging ourselves into the ground to try and do anything we shouldn't do. Just to give you a quick idea, obviously my recovery in easy paces is 130 heart rate and below. So in terms of pace, realistically at the moment anything 745 or 8 minute per mile and slower moderate pace is going to be around 645 to 655 somewhere in that bracket which we hit today goal marathon pace is going to be around six flat pace and then my critical velocity my rep pace is going to be around 530 per mile and there can be some other paces thrown in between tempo stuff like that which we'll fathom out and talk about as we go and dive, del uh, dive deeper into the series. But hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. We've got that bracket, we've got that pace range that we're going to be working with, none of which is going to be pushing me into that anaerobic zone because obviously a marathon is 99% an aerobic event. We need to be working all those zones to get us in the best shape possible. So there we go. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, obviously feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. As you can see, I'm super excited to get started obviously I have started but I'm super excited to deliver the first training series episode at the end of this week and then delve into it deeper as we go past Je December into January get our first time trial or race done and dusted and move on into February that's going to be an exciting time when we're really deep in marathon training and we'll really see how we feel and how the progression is happening let me know in the comments below if you're starting your marathon training this side of Christmas I personally have never started marathon training this early I always tend to start first or second week of January and it tends to be around a 12, 13, 14 week block depending on whatever race I'm doing but if you have before and you've ever done an 18 week block let me know in the comments below and tell me what marathon you're training for. If you enjoyed today's video guys make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and as always I'll see you on the next one. Until then.